What is a fairy tale? A fairy tale is a story with magical beings and magical land. Let me read you one. This story is called East of the Sun and West of the Moon, and it's a fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a poor countryman who had many children and little to give them either of food or clothing. They were all very pretty, but the prettiest was the youngest daughter. Once, late on a Thursday evening in autumn, with wild weather outside, they were sitting together by the fireside, each busy with something or other, when suddenly someone rapped three times against the window pane. The man went outside to see what could be the matter, and there in front of him stood a great big white bear. Good evening to you, said the white bear. Good evening, said the man. Will you give me your youngest daughter, said the white bear? If you will, you shall be as rich as you are now poor. Truly the man had no objection to being rich, but he said to himself, I must first ask my daughter about this. So he went in and told them all that a great white bear was outside, who had promised to make them rich if he could have the youngest daughter. But she said no, she would not hear of it. So the man went out again and settled with the white bear that he should come again the next Thursday evening and get her answer. Then the man talked so much to her about the wealth they would have and what a good thing it would be for herself that at last she made up her mind to go and washed and mended her rags to make herself as stylish as she could. Little enough had she to take away with her. Next Thursday evening, the white bear came to fetch her. She seated herself on his back with her bundle and thus they departed. When they had gone a great part of the way, the white bear said, Are you afraid? No, I am not, she said. Keep tight hold of my fur, and then there is no danger, said he. And thus she rode far, far away, until they came to a great mountain. When the white bear knocked on it, a door opened, and they went into a castle, where there were many brilliantly lighted rooms, which shone with gold and silver. There was a well-spread table, so magnificent it would be hard to make anyone understand how splendid it was. The white bear gave her a silver bell, which she had only to ring when she needed anything. After her supper, she grew sleepy and thought she would like to go to bed, so she rang the bell, and scarcely had it sounded before she found herself in a chamber where a bed stood ready. It had pillows of silk and curtains of silk fringed with gold, and everything in the room was of gold or silver. But when she had lain down and put out the light, a man came and lay down beside her, and behold, it was the white bear, who cast off the form of a beast during the night. She never saw him, however, for he always appeared after she had put out her light and went away before daylight. So everything went well for a time. But then she began to be very sad and sorrowful. All day long she was alone, and she did so wish to go home to her father and mother and brothers and sisters. Then the white bear asked what it was that she wanted, and she told him it was because she could not see her brothers and sisters that she was so sorrowful. There might be a cure for that, said the white bear. If you would but promise me never to talk with your mother alone, as she will wish, if you do so, you will bring great misery on both of us. What have you done now, said he? If you had just held out for the space of one year, I should have been free. I have a stepmother who has bewitched me, so I am a white bear by day and a man by night. Now all is at an end, and I must leave you and go to her. She lives in a castle which lies east of the sun and west of the moon. There is a princess with a nose more than a yard long, and now she is the one I must marry. She wept, but it was all in vain, for go he must. Then she asked him if she could not go with him, but no, that could not be. Can you tell me the way there, then, and I will seek you, that I may surely be allowed to do? Yes, you may do that, said he although as there is no way to find it, it lies east of the sun and west of the moon, and never could you find your way there. 
when she awoke in the morning both the white bear and the castle were gone and she was lying on a small green patch in the midst of a dark thick wood by her side lay the selfsame bundle of rags she had brought with her when she had rubbed the sleep out of her eyes and wept until she was weary she set out on her way at last she came to a great mountain at its foot an aged woman was sitting playing with a golden apple the girl asked her do you know the way to the prince who lives east of the sun and west of the moon and who has to marry a princess with a nose more than a yard long how do you happen to know about him inquired the old woman maybe you are the one who should have had him yes indeed i am she said so it is you then said the old woman i know only that he dwells in a castle east of the sun and west of the moon you will be a long time reaching it if ever you get there at all but you shall have the loan of my horse ride on it to an old neighbor of mine perhaps she can tell you when you arrive there you must strike the horse beneath the left ear and bid it return home again you may however take the golden apple with you the girl rode for a long long way and at last she came to another mountain where an aged woman was sitting with a gold carding comb the girl asked her if she knew the way to the castle which lay east of the sun and west of the moon but she said what the first old woman had said i know nothing about it but that it is east of the sun and west of the moon and you will be a long time in reaching it if ever you get there at all you shall have the loan of my horse to ride to the old woman who lives beyond me perhaps she may know where the castle is when you have reached her just strike the horse beneath the left ear and bid it to go home again then she gave her the gold carding comb for it might be of use to her she said so the girl seated herself on the horse and rode a wearisome way onward again and after a long long time she came to a great mountain where an aged woman was sitting spinning at a golden spinning wheel she inquired if she knew the way to the castle which lay east of the sun and west of the moon maybe you should have had the prince said the old woman yes i should have been the one said the girl but this old crone knew the way no better than the others did it was east of the sun and west of the moon she knew that and you will be a long time reaching it if you ever get there at all she said but you may have the loan of my horse and i think you had better ride to the east wind and ask him perhaps he may know where the castle is and will blow you there when you have reached him you must strike the horse beneath the left ear and he will come home again and then she gave her the golden spinning wheel saying perhaps you may find use for it the girl had to ride for a great many days for long hours before she found the east wind but at last she did arrive and when she asked him if he could tell her the way to the prince who dwelt east of the sun and west of the moon well said the east wind i have heard tell of the prince and his castle but i do not know the way to it for i have never blown so far but if you like i will go with you to my brother the west wind he may know for he is much stronger than i am you may sit on my back and then i can carry you there she seated herself on his back and off they went so very swiftly when they arrived the east wind went in and told his brother that the girl he had brought was the one who should have had the prince at the castle which lay east of the sun and west of the moon and now she was travelling about to find him again and he had brought her to ask if the west wind knew where the castle was no said the west wind as far as that i have never blown but if you like i will go with you to the south wind for he is much stronger than either of us and has roamed far and wide perhaps he can tell you what you want to know you may seat yourself on my back and i will carry you to him they journeyed to the south wind nor were they long on the way and the west wind asked his brother if he could tell her the way to the castle that lay east of the sun and west of the moon for she was the girl who should marry the prince who lived there oh indeed said the south wind well said he i have wandered about a great deal in my time in all kinds of places but i have never blown so far as that if you like however i will go with you to my brother the north wind he is the oldest and strongest of us all and if he does not know where the castle is no one in the whole world will be able to tell you you may sit upon my back and i will carry you there so she seated herself on his back 
and off he went from his house in great haste, and they were not long on the way. When they came upon his dwelling, the north wind was so wild and frantic that they felt cold gusts long before they reached it. What do you want? he roared out from afar, and they froze as they heard his voice, said the south wind. It is I, and this is the girl who should have had the prince, who lives in the castle which lies east of the sun and west of the moon. And now she wishes to ask you if you have been there and can tell her the way, for she would gladly find him. Yes, said the north wind. I know where it is. I once blew an aspen leaf there, but I was so tired that for many days afterward I was not able to blow at all. However, if you really are anxious to go there, and are not afraid to go with me, I will take you on my back and try to carry you there. Go there I must, said she, and if there is any way I will, I have no fear, no matter how fast you go. Very well, then, said the north wind, but you must sleep here tonight, for we must have the day before us. The north wind woke her early the next morning and puffed himself up and made himself so big and so strong that it was frightful to see him. And away they went, high up through the air, as if they would not stop until they reached the very end of the world. Below there was such a storm. It blew down woods and houses, and when they were above the sea, ships were wrecked by the hundreds. Thus they tore on and on, and a long time went by, and then yet more time passed, and still they were above the sea, and the north wind grew tired, and more tired, and at last, so utterly wearily, he was scarcely able to blow any longer, and he sank and sank, lower and lower, till at last he went so low that the crest of the waves dashed against the heels of the poor girl he was carrying. "'Are you not afraid?' asked the north wind. I have no fear, said she, and it was true. They were not very far from land, and there was just enough strength left in the north wind to enable him to throw her onto the shore. Immediately under the window of a castle, which lay east of the sun and west of the moon. But then he was so weary and worn out, he was forced to rest for several days before he could go on his own home again. Next morning, the girl sat down beneath the walls of the castle to play with the golden apple, and the first person she saw was the maiden with the long nose who was to marry the prince. How much do you want for the golden apple of yours, girl? she asked, opening the window. It cannot be bought either for gold or money, answered the girl. If it cannot be bought either for gold or money, what will buy it? You may say what you please, said the princess. Well, if I may go to the prince who is here and be with him tonight, you shall have it, said the girl who had come with the north wind. You may do that, said the princess, for she had made up her mind what she would do. So the princess got the golden apple, but when the girl went up to the prince's apartment that night, he was asleep, for the princess had so contrived it by giving him a sleeping potion. The, the poor girl called to him and shook him, and between whiles she wept, but she could not wake him. In the morning, as soon as day dawned, in came the princess with the long nose and drove her out again. In the daytime, she sat down once more beneath the windows of the castle and began to card with her golden carding comb, and then all happened as it had happened before. The princess asked her what she wanted for it, and the girl replied it was not for sale, either for gold or money but if she could have leave to go to the prince and be with him during the night, she could have it. But when she went up to the prince's room, he was again asleep, and let her call him or shake him or weep as she would, he still slept on, and she could not put any life in him. When daylight came in the morning, the princess with the long nose came too, and once more she drove her away. When day had come, the girl seated herself under the castle windows to spin with her golden spinning wheel, and the princess with the long nose wanted to have that also. So she opened the window and asked what she would take for it. The girl said what she had said on each of the former occasions, that it was not for sale, either for gold or for money. But if she could have leave to go to the prince who lived there and be with him during the night, the princess should have it. 
Yes, said the princess, I will gladly consent to that. In that palace there were some decent folk who had been sitting in the chamber which was next to that of the prince, and had heard how a woman had been there, weeping and calling on him two nights running, and they told the prince of this. So that evening, when the princess came once more with her potion, he pretended to drink, but threw it away behind him instead, for he suspected that it was the sleeping drink. When the girl went into the prince's room, this time he was awake, and she had to tell him how she had come to find her way there. You have come just in time, said the prince, for I have, should be, have been married tomorrow, but I will not have the long-nosed princess, and you alone can save me. I will save that I want to see what my bride can do, and bid her wash the shirt which has the three drops of tallow on it. This she will consent to do, for she does not know it is you who let them fall on it. No one can wash them out but one born of real folk. It cannot be done by a troll. Then I will say that no one shall ever be my bride but the woman who can succeed at this, and I know that you can. There was great joy and gladness between them, and the next day when the wedding was to take place, the prince said to his stepmother, I must see what my bride can do. That you may, said she. I have a fine shirt which I want to wear at my wedding, but three drops of tallow have gotten upon it, which I want to have washed off and I have vowed to marry no one but the woman who was able to do it. If she cannot, she is not worth having. Well, that was a very small matter, they thought, and agreed to it. The princess with the long nose began to wash as well as she could, but the more she washed and rubbed, the larger the spots grew. Ah, you cannot wash it all, said the old troll who was her mother. Give it to me. But she, too, had not had the shirt very long, in her hands before it looked worse still and the more she washed it and rubbed it the larger and blacker grew the spots the other trolls had come and wash but the more they did the blacker and uglier grew the shirt until at length it was as black as it had been up the chimney oh cried the prince not one of you is good for anything at all there is a beggar girl sitting outside the window and i'll be bound she can wash better than any of you Come in, you girl there, he cried. So she came in. Can you wash the shirt clean, he cried. Oh, I don't know, she said, but I will try. And no sooner had she taken the shirt and dipped it in the water than it was as white as driven snow, and even whiter than that. I will marry you, said the prince. Then the old troll flew into such a rage that she burst, and the princess with the long nose and all the little trolls must have burst too, for they were never heard of since the prince and his bride set free all the good people who were imprisoned there and took them with them all the gold and silver they could carry and moved far away from the castle which lay east of the sun and west of the moon